This is part two of going to a University of Tennessee football game. Now, first of all, in part one, we talked about where to park, how to park, free parking, and all the different things about the actual overall rundown of the day. And this is part two. Part two, we're gonna discuss tailgating. We're gonna discuss what you can and cannot bring into the stadium. We're gonna discuss having your tickets ready. Remember, I mentioned that already in part one. If you haven't watched it, go watch it. Um, and we're also gonna talk about the best places to sit in the stadium if you want to avoid sun or you wanna be shaded or you want to not be drenched if it rains. So let me know your thoughts and let's dive in. Now, what if you are tailgating but you don't have a parking pass. So you have some options, but this is another situation where you're gonna to need to plan ahead. It is not as if, as I'm making this, today is September the 7th. Our first home game is on September the 9th. So just for context, if you're like, oh yeah, we're gonna tailgate, either number one, you need to have a parking pass already if you're wanting to like tailgate on campus, or you need to have already made arrangements. Either like in Circle Park, or, which is probably way too late for that at this point, or there are businesses along Cumberland that will sell spots to you where you can tailgate. Now, some of those are first come, first serve. So for example, we used to tailgate, shout out to Miss Dean Clint, my friends, who now live in Florida. But anyways, she celebrated her birthday for a tailgate. Well, where we were tailgating, you did have to pay for a spot, but you couldn't like reserve it in advance. So her husband got down there at like 5 a.m and reserved the spot, a big enough spot, paid for it, we put the tents up, we did the thing. But I would not wait until the last minute because, or if you are waiting till the last minute, then you're, you're gonna need to leave your house at the butt crack of dawn. Okay, I know that's not appropriate. I could say something worse, but you know what I'm saying. You're gonna need to leave way sooner than that. If you are tailgating, you need to have a plan. You gotta execute it ahead of time. So I just wanna mention that about tailgating. Now, supposedly, this is not a University of Tennessee uh, licensed video or whatever. This is just my own personal experience information and information that I have piled together, compiled information I've piled, I've compiled together. Okay. I have asked more than one source who are major tailgaters, have tailgated in the past, I've been to their tailgates, whatever. And the consensus is that if there's grass, it's a free for all. In other words, if there's grass and you get there soon enough, if you put your little tent there soon enough, you can tailgate there. Now, there's also an unspoken rule that like so-and-so, Jimmy Tom Tom has been tailgating at this certain grass spot for the past 25 years. And if Haley Jones shows up and puts her tent down earlier than Jimmy Tom Tom, then my uh, little uh, tent is gonna be moved, okay? So just, Tread lightly if you're thinking, oh, this is a free grass space. I'm gonna put myself out here the night before the game. Jimmy Tom Tom is probably going to um, put it somewhere else. It's gonna be displaced, okay? That is the word on the street. Again, this is not an official word. It's just from people's past experiences, okay? So all that moral of the story is you gotta prepare yourself if you're thinking of tailgating, either it needs to be in one of those parking spots. Like you gotta secure the space is all I'm trying to tell you. Um, don't think you're just gonna roll up at noon for a five o'clock game and be like, we're gonna tailgate, but like you don't have you don't have a place to do so. Make sense? Um, and like I said, there are businesses along Cumberland Avenue, although there is so much construction going on right now, you probably could call one of those businesses and say, hey, do you sell do you allow tailgating or whatever? Do you sell spots? Like, what do I need to do that? Do I just need to show up that day? Do I need to prearrange with you? Because for example, we used to, we had a friend who in Half Barrel back in the day, he would pay for the season up front, and that would be for like five spaces for every home game. So we would go there um, and tailgate before the game. So, um, but again, he had done that before the season. He had arranged to do that with the business. Or sometimes the business like contracts that out to someone else. So you can call them and say, hey, you know, again, just have a conversation. Do you allow tailgating? Can we get a pass? Can we get it for the whole season? Blah, 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 whatever. Um, if you're trying to do that days before the season starting, you may be too late. You may be able to get for a um, non-crazy game. But like there's, for example, a business 
that they specifically do like tailgating supplies. It's tailgatingtennessee.com. Let me check it. It's I'm pretty sure it's like tailgatetennessee.com or tip. Look it up. You'll find it. Um, I will link it here below. So sorry. Um, but like for example, if you look at what's available for their oh I had it pulled up tailgatetennessee.com. If you look at what's available, like they're sold out the Georgia game, sold out all their packages. The UTSA game which is in September, so a couple weeks from the making of this video. There's a couple packages still available. Um, everything is sold out. For, Vanderbilt is still available. South Carolina sold out. I have a bone to pick with South Carolina after last year's game. I'm just telling you that I'm still bitter. You probably saw me talk about that on another video. Whatever. All that being said, go to Tailgate Tennessee and they can supply stuff for you and they can also help you um, likely with like, hey, where could we do this or whatever. They're gonna know for sure what you can and cannot do. So that would be another great resource for you. Okay, so that's tailgating. Now let's talk about game day. So a huge part of the game day experience are things like the ball walk, you've got um, the march to the stadium by the um, Pride of the Southland Band. Um, you've got the pregame tee where the Pride of the Southland Band is like on the, on the field. And they open up and they form the tee and the game, the team runs through the tee and it's literally magical. Okay. So again, um, for, this is for, just for context. So you kind of have an idea. First of all, the band has a Facebook page and on that Facebook page, every game day, it's going to give you the rundown of the schedule. And this is not just for football. This is for like all the sports. Okay. Cause the game, the band is a huge part of all the sports. So if you go to that Facebook page, again, I will link it for you. It will tell you the exact times of when stuff is happening. So again, the game, just for context, just to give you an example timeline, for a five o'clock kickoff, the band has 10 a.m. open rehearsal on Volunteer Boulevard. Okay, so that's when you can kind of start to get in the vibe, you know, stuff's happening. Now, 2.45, so we have a five o'clock game, go back two hours and 15 minutes before kickoff. This is when the ball walk happens. This is when the players are walking into the stadium. Super cool, the band is playing, it's super dramatic, it's really awesome, definitely wanna see it. So that's about two hours and 15 minutes before kickoff. So, and that's on uh, Peyton Manning Pass is where it is, the name of where this is. So if you go look at a map, you're gonna see what I'm talking about. If I'm telling you this right now, you're like, hey, what are you talking about? Peyton Manning Pass is where the ball walk is coming down. So cool. So that happens two hours and 15 minutes before the game. Then at 3.20, the full band marches to Nalen, Nalen uh, with a stop for salute to the hill. So 3.20, so that would be about an hour and a half before kickoff, the march of the band happens. The entire Pride of the Southland band is marching to the stadium and they are playing. And again, it is super awesome. You got to experience it. So cool. Okay. Then the next most important time to know is 15 minutes before kickoff. The band is coming on the field. They make the tee and the team runs through, which means if you're wanting to see all that pregame celebration, my suggestion to you is, and this is like literally living on the edge. Okay. I even told my mom this earlier and she was like, Haley, that is not enough time but I know it's enough time because I've done it. Okay, so I'm talking about at the very last minute, if you're wanting to see the players run through the tee on the field, you need to be getting into the stadium 30 minutes. You need to be in line at the stadium no less than 30 minutes before kickoff because they run through that tee 15 minutes before kickoff. And if everyone already had their tickets downloaded, you probably could, you know, walk up five minutes before, you know, the tea is supposed to happen and walk in easily. But let's be honest, that's not what's gonna happen. And people are gonna bring backpacks they weren't supposed to bring in their suitcases and like all this stuff they weren't supposed to bring. It's gonna slow the line down. It's gonna be a cluster. So if you want to see the band and the team run through the tea, you need to be in line to walk into the stadium 30 minutes before kickoff. And my mom, and it's my mom, so she probably knows something. She knows more than I do, that's for sure. Um, she's like, no, it needs to be at least 45 minutes. I think that's a little aggressive. However, if you did get in there earlier, you have plenty of time. Get a drink, relax, you're good, find your seat. 
use the bathroom and then be in your seat 15 minutes before kickoff to see the T and the team run through the T. I'm telling you, it is so cool. There's, it's just amazing. It is, I can't even describe it. I, I videoed it last year. There is a video of it happening last year. If you want to go see it, go check it out. Um, but it's awesome. So anyways, so 15 minutes before kickoff is when you will see the team running through the T. So that's kind of the rundown of like the day, right? So park early. Uh, you've got about two hour, two and a half hours when the team enters where you can watch with the band. You've got about an hour and a half before kickoff where the band is going to march in. And then you've got 15 minutes before kickoff where you can see the team run through the tee. So let's talk about some of the other things that I just want to mention to you to know. So in terms of things that you can bring into the stadium, we've already talked about this. You can bring in a clear bag, no larger than a 12 by six by 12. So um, this is an example of where I've, I've fallen off on the job because I don't have an example of this, but I don't ever bring anything that big. So I don't have, I have like a tiny little clear bag, which even that could be a clutch. But if you think like a piece of paper, just as an example is um, like, this is an eight and a half by 11. So 12 is, you know, one inch taller basically and then like six inches thick so um not a huge bag at all don't be bringing a backpack in so clear bag um you can have a, cl a clear plastic storage bag um it says one gallon resellable i don't know what you're putting in there i guess you're gonna bring your sandwich in your plastic storage gallon bag i'm sure there's something that makes a lot of sense that i'm not thinking of i'm just telling you you can bring a clear plastic bag up to a gallon size, okay? You can have a small clutch, no larger than four and a half by six and a half. So that, that would account for a wallet. You can bring your wallet in and you can bring a seat cushion that says no arms and no pockets. So in your seat, in your seat cushion, it can't be one of those like fold up ones and it cannot be one of the ones that has a pocket in it. So just like the poof basically. Now, um, what is absolutely prohibited? backpacks solid or clear plastic printed pattern plastic bags so if you have a i don't have one if you have a plastic bag that's got like a print on it you cannot bring it in it needs to be clear you cannot bring fanny packs purses you cannot bring reusable grocery totes you know like uh hold on i've got one I've got one for you. For example, look at this. It's even branded. Uh, you cannot bring this in. Can't bring it in. Um, mesh bags, no. Duffel bags, no. Large tote bag, no. Camera case, no. Diaper bags, no. Clinch bag, so that's where you, you know, it's like those sport bags, we tie at the top, cannot bring that in. Colored plastic storage bag, cannot do that. If you're bringing a storage bag, it's gotta be clear and less than a gallon or a gallon or less. Um, some other things to note that you cannot bring. Again, no diaper bags. You may not bring alcoholic beverages in. Don't do it. Don't be that person. Don't shove it in your boots. Even though some of y'all in here I know are gonna do that because you're sneaky. Um, you cannot bring selfie sticks, no umbrellas. You cannot bring radios with headsets. You cannot bring outside food, snacks, or beverages unless needed for medical purposes. No cans, no bottles, no coolers, which is different than uh, Bristol Motor Speedway because you can bring a cooler in there. You know what I mean? Um, no professional cameras or cameras with detachable lenses. This is what I just don't understand. No unmanned aircraft, which I guess people, maybe were bringing drones in there. I don't know. That's dumb. Don't do that. Um, stadium seats with arms or pockets. Again, you cannot do that. You cannot have large bags or parcels, including backpacks, purses. We already talked about that. No weapons, ugh, including pocket knives, no hoverboards, no segways. Um, no artificial noise makers, AKA leave your air horn uh -uh, at home. Um, no smoking. And that includes e-cigarettes. Um, you cannot, cannot do it. Cannot smoke on campus. Can't do it. Um, no strollers and no posters or signs larger than eight and a half by 11. Who's going to see this? No. Okay. This is what you can bring again, small clutches. You can bring empty clear water bottles. You can bring your cell phone binoculars without the case. So probably you want to have your little strap. 
Um, seat cushions without arm talk. We already talked about that. Radios with headsets. Diapers and non-medically necessary items for babies and young children. They have to be carried in a clear bag, though. Do not bring your diaper bag in. And limited use of cameras, which this is, like, a little bit loose. Um, game action may not be filmed. Consideration of other specta spectators is expected. Um, so, anyways, that's things about what you can and cannot bring in. Don't bring your Segway. Okay, don't bring your hoverboard. Don't bring your diaper bag. Um, okay, so the other thing I wanted to mention, and this is about where are you sitting in the stadium. Depending on where you are sitting in the stadium, you're going to get a ton of sun and you're going to be roasting. So if you are on the river side of the stadium, so this would be like sections Q through G. So that's basically this whole side. Here's the river. This side, there is no cover you're gonna roast. And part of this down here is like student section and the band. Um, so check out the map. Hopefully, my editors, please put the map up. But if you're in those Q through G sections, you're gonna be hot, you're gonna be roasting, just prepare thyself. The other side of the stadium, that, uh, a lot of that has some shade to it. If you're up high enough, you even actually have TVs. Like, now they're not great TVs, okay? They're like, before high definition was in existence. Okay, they're a little bit like, uh, like fuzzy. Um, so just bear that in mind. Um, I would say regardless, wear sunscreen, but you know, whatever, or like in the winter. In the winter, it's not so bad if you're sitting in those sunspots because it's cold. Um, so it's a give and take, right? In the winter, it's fine. In the summer, you're roasting. Um, so first of all, this is the, um, Malin Stadium map. And what I wanted to say um, is this Q to G, all of this gets massive sun, massive sun. And like eventually parts of this get shaded or whatever. And a lot of this has shading um, from the sun. But over here, if you are in these sections, you need a hat, you need sunscreen, you need sunglasses. Okay, it's gonna be so bright. So that's just about the stadium. Um, just want to point that out to you. And kind of how do you know, how do I know that? So I know that Nayland is over, I know that, sorry, Tennessee River is over this way because I know where the band sits. And the band sits like in the far corner, whatever, whatever. Um, so anyways, yeah, so home sideline. And then this is where the team runs out right here, right through there. So the, the band makes a big T, la 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 la, rocky top. Um, and then also V-O-L-S, the, the letters, Vols, are over here. Those got refurbished and put back up last year, and they're literally magical. Um, so that's like orientation of stadium. Um, something else I wanted to show you is that you have a UT Game Day Central website. So for example, this is for the game that's about to be uh, right before the making of this video. And what you can see is like all the rules are here, the bag policy, everything you should know in terms of like policies, et cetera, are here. Um, but there's also visuals and even more visuals about what you can and cannot take into the stadium. And so uh, there's that. So that's just a good resource for you. I think this is the same page. Um, the other thing that I would like to point out to you about like, the game, the stadium, and all that is alcohol. Now, it has not been that long that alcohol was actually allowed to be sold in the stadium for a long time, like it wasn't allowed, period. Um, so I just wanna point that out to you, but also say that they stopped selling alcohol. I'm gonna fact check this. Um, okay, beer sales will conclude at the end of the third quarter. Okay, so just wanna say that for those of you that are like, oh, drop this. For those of you that are like, we're gonna drink for the whole game, whatever. No, you cannot buy anything after the end of the third quarter. You can only buy two drinks at a time. Do not be that jerk off that's like, I have five IDs. Can you give me five drinks? Just don't do it. Two drinks at a time, two drinks sold per transaction. It says, please pack your patience while waiting in line. Per policy, each alcoholic beverage must be poured into a clear cup upon purchase. Do not be a jerk about this. Listen, UT did not have, you cannot, 
that you cannot buy any alcoholic beverage in UT period for the longest of times. So that being said, now that it's allowed, don't be an a-hole, just be patient. It's okay, they're gonna put it in a clear cup, let it go, let it go, let it go. Um, the other thing is that it just says, obviously this goes without saying, individuals will be ejected from the venue and are subject to a prosecution if they pass off beer to a minor. <laughs> The, okay, don't do that. Don't do that. Um, we know what happens. I'm just saying, don't be that one. Don't be that one, you know? Um, so, yeah. So, the other thing, a couple other just notes about game day. Gates of Nayland Stadium open two hours before kickoff. So, 5 o'clock game. Gates open at 3. Remembering that you can watch the team march into the stadium just before that, about two hours and 15 minutes ahead of time. And then the gates will open. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, I'm trying to like make sure I'm not missing anything major. Go back through my notes. Um, and again, just want to point out the two must do's. Two must do's are have your tickets ready to go before you even get in line. Know where they are. Which, by the way, say you need to um, share tickets on the app. You totally can do that. It's possible. We've done it. However, again, don't wait to the last minute to do that because you're going to be screwed. Someone's not getting in the game. Okay. So just if you're trying to share tickets or someone's trying to give you tickets, um, do that beforehand and make sure you know your logins. Cause I'm pretty sure for that you have to have a ticket master login and bring your patience. Cause it can be a little bit annoying. So just figure that out beforehand. Don't be figuring that out, you know, right before you're trying to walk in the stadium. Cause it's not going to work out for you. You're going to lose your mind. Um, and yeah, the other thing is have fun. I mean, it's going to be great. Sing Rocky Top, sing at the top of your lungs. You're going to love it. And you're always going to want to go back. It's going to be super, super fun. Let me just check one more time. Make sure I'm not missing anything. We talked about parking. We talked about what's allowed. Um, we talked about the clear bag policy. We talked about how to tailgate, where to tailgate. Um, we talked about drinking can't buy after the end of third quarter we talked about um the schedule for the band we talked about um so on your ticket it's going to tell you like what where to enter so just follow that i mean you can walk around the stadium i'm just telling you just go by what it's saying um and we talked about all the prohibited items we talked about sitting in the sun um there is an awesome website utsports.com backslash sports blah 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 but basically it has um, information there's a, there's a site for every game but then also there's links for kind of all the information it's called game day central and it's going to tell you all the things you need to know and then there's also um, on that same place um, you can find a website like per the game and the other resource that's really great is the University of Tennessee Band's Facebook page because that's going to tell you exactly the rundown for like when to see the ball walk when to see the band march in and when you can see the team running through the team. So have the best time. Rocky Top, you'll always be home sweet home to me. Good old Rocky Top. Woo! Rocky Top, Tennessee. If you want to see more of me singing, I don't have a channel for that yet. Um, so don't, you know, take action on that. But anyways, if you want to know more about the Knoxville area, please subscribe. And as always, if you need me, Text or call, I'm there. I'm Haley Jones and I'll see you on the next video.